So today we're going to put some respect back on the DraftKings name. This stock has been absolutely destroyed over the last few months. If we just go on the stock chart, you'll be able to see that since we got round to September time, from $62, no reason, no fundamentals change with the company. The stock has lost six, uh, sorry, 74% and went from $62 all the way down to $16. It has been an absolute disaster on the share price. And without doubt, we've had a bit of a correction. We've had a bit of a bear market. We've had a lot of growth stocks take a massive hit. But for DraftKings to go from $62 down to $16 and not one single thing, in fact, all that's happened is fundamentally the company's improved is and the stock price has tanked. It's been a little bit frustrating to be an investor. But as always, this can always happen with the share price. And today we are going to go through that and just put a bit more respect on DraftKings name and prove that this company shouldn't be down at $16. You know, this company is performing absolutely amazing and the fundamentals just getting stronger and stronger. And one day, whenever that will be, the uh, the share price will move back in the right, right direction again for this company because uh, those fundamentals are growing in the right direction. And as well as that, the uh, CEO, the founder, Jason Robbins, actually actually came out with some uh, comments out uh, on, on Twitter that we'll talk about in a second. But yeah, unbelievable uh, drop off on the DraftKings share price. I don't like talk, I'd normally on the channel, I don't like talking about the uh, same stocks all the time. Uh, I normally talk about a, a stock for an update and then probably won't talk about it for a month or two because as long what I am a long-term investor, that's kind of what I do. I kind of like just make sure everything's, everything's going all right in the company, then tuck it back away in the file, filing cabinet and then have a look and make sure that everything's going to plan with that investment and do that every couple of times over a course of a year. And uh, that's what I like to do and that's what I like to do on the YouTube channel. But when it is your kind of, biggest investment, uh, your biggest position in the stock market and you are seeing your stock getting disrespected this much and it, it's very hard to ignore it, you know, you got, I've got to kind of come out and talk about this situation and, you know, with DraftKings it's been a bit of a weird one, especially over the last few months because we were starting to put a bit of a bounce in since January, you know, we got around to about $20, started to recover over about uh, nearly a month's period and then earnings came out and earnings dropped a huge amount. It was strange really because the earnings were actually really strong from DraftKings. Like, I can't remember exactly what I gave them. I feel like it was probably like a 9 out of 10 on the earnings. The earnings were really, really good and the stock absolutely tanked on the earnings. And then within a few days' time, you know, investors came back in and realized, oh, you know, we absolutely tanked DraftKings on earnings. We should probably buy that dip back up. And they came back in and bought that dip. And then what's happened recently is since that dip has been bought back up again, boom, then it sold off back again. And yeah, we're sitting it down at 16 11 52 close of $16 and I generally think that this for me is without doubt I expect a, two, a, a double up my return in the next five years 100% I have to do that to even get back to break even um, I think my average is somewhere around $44 at the moment so um, yeah it would have to go up a lot more than uh, 2x but I generally at these sort of prices um, I generally expect DraftKings to have the potential to easily come a 10 bagger in the next five years at these sort of valuations. It's, it's unbelievable how unfairly value, valued this is getting at the moment. And this is what I meant earlier. It actually led to the founder, CEO, Jason Robbins, come out with some aggressive fighting talk on Twitter. He said, if you sold DraftKings or hashtag DKNG and you take a symbol for DraftKings today, just be aware that my team and I are on a mission to make you regret that decision more than any other decision you've ever made in your life. Big statement for, there from Jason Robbins. And this led to where uh, this this tweet actually took off a, a huge amount on Twitter um, and it ended up actually being talked about in quite a few different places and some people talked about it in a positive manner and a few people talked about it in a negative manner saying, oh, your CEO and founder shouldn't be doing this, you know, they should be focusing on the stock and improving the f fundamentals of the company and in some as aspects I would agree that that is probably true but in this case with DraftKings, I disagree because what you've had here is Jason Robbins and uh, uh, DraftKings have, have, had, have had a fantastic 2021. They are focused on the business. They have delivered, um, you know, I, I'd say three out of the four quarters in 2021, they've delivered nine out of 10, 10 out of 10 financials. There was only one quarter, which I think was Q3, um, which was the disappointing one, uh, but even that was pretty solid. And so they, they, they are focused, they're delivering absolutely huge amount. And the thing is DraftKings is, he, uh, and DraftKings and Jason Robbins, he's, he's got, he's, he owns like, I think 10% of the company. So he has plenty of skin in the game that this actually matters to him that DraftKings does do well. Now, I think that because the stock has been sold off so much, I think this is actually good for Jason Robbins to just come on Twitter. I'm, I'm sure the tweet took him 
20 seconds to type it out, maybe a minute, just to type out to the shareholders of look, we are getting decimated, I'm getting decimated, I own 10% of the company, I'm getting absolutely killed off. Um, I understand the pain that it's going through at the moment, but we will get through this and the company will do well. I, I am happy for him to come out and put these t tweets out and talk to the investors like this. In fact, I would say that it would be great for more CEO and founders to do this. My problem would be with if Jason Robbins came out with these sort of tweets and the stock is at 52 highs and he says, oh, the stock's just gonna keep going up and up and up and them sort of comments. Then, and while he was doing that, he was also dumping you know shares off that he owned. That would be where I would be more worried with the situation. But for him to kind of come out at 52 close and to kind of support what the investors out there, I think this is quite good from a CEO and founder. Um, and yeah, I, I think he's totally right. I think DraftKings is gonna be in a massive space. And Jason Robbins, you know, he is ahead of the game. Um, you know, he, quite early on in the uh, growth of the sports betting stage, is he kind of realized, okay, to have a very successful company here, we need to go to a mobile app so much quicker than everyone else. They did that and DraftKings, performed very well over that until everyone else eventually ca catched up you know you look at the movement they're making into the nft space right now and everything else that they're kind of moving into you know a media company potentially they jason robbins is ahead of the game he knows DraftKings kings further down the line this isn't going to be just a sports betting company it's going to be more than that and um yeah i, I think he's, he's a fantastic leader fantastic ceo fantastic founder putting a you know led the company to a great 2021 even though the share price doesn't um show it and i think that this talk here i'm happy for him to come out and say these comments i, I it get it, as an investor it gave me a little bit of confidence of like you know oh, he, he, he's committed to the cause so yeah i was happy with that and a few people took it in negative light but i generally don't have a little problem or a problem with him sending a little tweet out that took him 20 seconds to type to say we, we we're going to do this you know so I, I was happy from that point of view but going on to like DraftKings as well, you know, going back to the whole point of the video, which is DraftKings, you know, now putting in a new 52, 52 close again. You know, you just have to look at how good of a year this has been for DraftKings. They came into the year, so DraftKings is raising its financial 2021 revenue guidance from a range of 750 million to 850 million to a range of 900 million to 1 billion, consensus of 867 million. So, yeah, at the start of this year, in February time, in 2021, when we kind of go back to that time, which seems so long ago now, you know, 12 months ago, DraftKings was going to come into it this year with seven, you know, 850, let's go for the higher end, 850 million. Um, and that's what analysts, analysts were just expecting a little bit up here. And then they straight away went, okay, we, I think this is probably when the Michigan launch happened. So this is why they kind of raised it. Uh, you know, 900 million to 1 billion, a massive, massive raise. Now you go 12 months on, what did they end up doing? You know, 12 months on, did they deliver that 900 to 1 billion range? Well, 12 months on, what did DraftKings actually end up doing? Well, they actually ended up delivering 1.3 billion in revenue, 1.3 billion. So this estimate they brought out, which was a massive hike up at the start of the year, they even smashed that, no, absolutely, absolutely demolished it. And what respect does that have on the share price? Nothing nothing no respect on the share price if we go back to february time um the the stock was valued at 16 dollars. what's the stock price it's up 0 0.56 percent since february last year and and that's them absolutely smashing it so yeah make of that what you want you know that's what i mean by the company just keeps moving and moving in, in, in the right direction and going on the, the recent earnings as well like even the recent earnings were just unbelievable like uh, they straight away they increased their 2022 revenue guidance to 1.85 billion to 2 billion and the thing is well you know if this genog merger goes through it's it probably potentially be a bit higher than that and also there was better than expected results with 47 percent year over year revenue growth and they beat the guidance by eight percent another massive massive beat and the thing is well is in this quarter there was more details, you know, this this company mostly gets a bit of stick because they aren't profitable. Um, but even in this quarter, like there was just more updates about how the, the, the states that are maturing, they, they get into that two to three year range, even sometimes before that, are starting to get to profitability. And they, were, they basically came out and said, look, we could be a profitable company if we wanted to, but we are going after this time. We are growing huge amounts every year. We're taking market share. The profitability will come further down the line. First things first, let's take the market share. And they came out and said, you know, the mounts or the parts of the business 
that uh, get into profitability so much quicker than what they thought was unbelievable. So that was even more impressive that the revenue growth is absolutely smashing it, but even the, the maturity side of it, the profitability side of it, on the number side of it, when you look at the adjusted EBIT side of it, then maybe you don't see that because that's being focused on more and more new states. But what the long-term game plan is, if you understand the company, if you have the vision, the parts of the company that are the mature parts are coming in major profit, profitable as well at the moment, which is great. And then recently, just to top it off, uh, DraftKings bought their, brought their recent investor day out. There was um, These were the key takeaways I'm just gonna say to you. TAM, larger than what we thought. So we know that every kind of year at the moment, the TAM for the sports betting industry is getting bigger, 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 bigger. Is People aren't realizing how big this is gonna be and it's just growing faster and faster. So this market, this TAM that they're in is getting is getting huge. You know, the more years this goes, it's only starting, you know, the more years this goes on, the better opportunity it's gonna be. Absolutely great for DraftKings. What we kind of expected, it's now coming down to basically three companies that are going to be in this space. You've got DraftKings, BetMGM, and Fangio, and that's what's there. Them three are going to control the market share. So you know, a lot of people always said that this was a very competitive, competitive space. It's it's already turning out that there's going to be three major competitors in this area. Them three competitors. So there's enough room in an 80 billion industry for three competitors. So that's one thing as well that's what is, is been, is happening a lot quicker than what people thought. You know, the TAM's growing a lot quicker, they're getting profitability a lot quicker, and also um, the, the market share, um, very condensed into what was gonna be a very competitive market. A little bit about the profitability here, customer and state profit results are very strong. Five states contribution profit positive in financial year 2021, and 10 states anticipated to contribution profit positive in financial 2022. So once again, the profit side of the company growing even faster to profitability. 10 states, 10 states to be contribute profit in financial year 2022. Absolutely amazing. Increase the long-term adjusted EBITDA outlook to 2.1 billion. So what's happening as well is the margins on the business, you know, you look at the gross margins of the mature states now, they're getting really good. So this company is going to, in the long term, is expecting more profitability now. And one little point I'm going to add in here that isn't on this point of list here is that you know a lot of these states that are maturing, you know, likes of New Jersey that's been around, I believe New Jersey is now into its fourth year, I believe, or it's its fifth year. New Jersey as well. The thing is, is these the rates of New Jersey are still growing a lot quicker than what people thought. You know, this is why going into this year, DraftKings is going to still grow at 50% because the states of DraftKings, uh, like New Jersey, which are now, you know, profitable, they're still growing at massive rates. You know, people thought that when they got to this point of view, New Jersey wouldn't grow. Uh, I can't even remember what it is now. I believe it was 30%, but you'll have to double check that. Um, I think it might be 30%. It might be even more than that. You know, people thought that was going to be start really slowing down right now. The thing is that even the mature states still grow at a massive rate. And this is the great thing about this company. And once again, just to finish this point off, is just from a valuation point of view, you know, you look at the total enterprise value to revenue now, currently on a forward basis, it's currently valued down at a 2.92. On a forward basis, the revenue is trading down at a 2.92. For a company that is, is in the massive town, that's doing very well on um, the, the profit side of it, and even this year is gonna put in 50% revenue growth, and it's down at a two. A two, you know, look at the metrics it's done previously. You know, 21, 31, 21, 22, 16, and then it started taking its dip here 12, 6, 2. It's unbelievable. Like, without doubt, a company of this sort of standards, it, it doesn't go down to a two normally. I mean, even at a five, I'm saying it's cheap, and that's you know, you know, over double from where it is right now, and and that's still that's still unbelievably cheap. So Honestly, um, just a little bit of an update on DraftKings because I just want to talk about it and I've talked about it a lot on the channel but I feel like when it's my biggest investment and it means a lot to me and I, I'm kind of known for that stock and it, then it puts in new 52 close even though every single thing in the company keeps moving in the right direction. It is frustrating, it is frustrating to me as an investor, you know, um, but you've got to remember what, what, why are you in it? Why are you in, why are you in, into this company? Why do you own shares in this company? And it's a long-term game. You know, when... I feel, and clearly Jason Robbins feels as well, that when you look at DraftKings and you look at that share price in a couple of years' time, you'll think, oh, you know, I'm happy about that dip. In fact, you, you might even say to yourself, and it was very very similar in the likes of when I had uh, Tesla, and then that went on to a very good run. You you go, it's, an, it's a nightmare when you go through that dip, but actually when you're out on the other side and that stock actually then does go on that run, 
you actually say to yourself, you know what, I'm actually happy it went down, I'm happy that it went down 20, 30, 40, 50% because I just accumulated more and more shares and when it went in the right direction, that just meant I made more money. And I think, I think DraftKings is set for that. It is very much, in my opinion, DraftKings is very much set for that. And like I said, I normally invest to get a 2x return. Without doubt, I am expecting massive things from DraftKings in the next few years and it is more than a 2x return. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, if you could hit the like button if you're new, subscribe and I'll see you next video.